Okay, I've primed all the pieces in black, just using SMS Surfacer Black. I've also uh, stuck on some of the greedyblies on the, the side of the ship, just because they were, um, you know, they're all going to be pretty much the same colour, so um, there's no issue with that. So it's like this little mini bridge here on this side, and then on the other side, <coughs> there's uh, this little piece that I've stuck on. And then on the bottom, there's also these two sort of end uh, fin pieces. So I've just primed everything in black. It's all on sticks, basically ready to go. So, you know, all little fine bits that I've got to paint different colors. The, uh, the guns will be painted in the same color, but I want to blacken the um, barrels just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more sort of variation. So next thing is to sort of talk about the colors that I want to use, and I'm just going off the box art here. So for the, um, the purple one, I'm going to be using SMS Violet. And I think I'm going to pretty much use it straight out of the bottle. Um, there is, you can see the violet's a little bit lighter than the colour in the box. However, I do know that after this gets a matte varnish, it will darken up a little bit. So that's close enough for me. I'm going to be happy with that. For the decks, I'm going to be using the dark grey for the base grey colour. And then for um, the stripes, I'm going to use uh, a light grey. So... Um, yeah, I don't want to use white because it's. I think it would be a bit stark. So I think uh, you know, these two colours will probably work pretty well together. So that's what I'll be using for the purple one. For the blue one, I'll be using the same greys for the decks, but I'll be using SMS Blue. And again, you can see the colours may be a little bit brighter than what's on the box, but that's all right. I do know that um, this will darken up. And then finally for the green one, I will be using SMS Green. And I think that's, um, that's a pretty good match. I mean, these colours do look really vibrant in the bottle, but once you get a matte coat on them, it tends to knock them back a little bit and darken them up a little bit. So they're the, um, they're the paints I'm going to use. And uh, there you go, get them all lined up. And so the next step for me is to get painting and so that we can start looking at things like uh, putting panel line washers and that sort of thing. Okay, so I'm trying to work out the masking that I need to do. And essentially it's all going to happen on the different decks of each of the ships. So what I've done <coughs> is masked all around the sides and the areas where I want them to remain the main uh, body colour which I've printed, you know, I've painted the green, the blue and the purple. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pretty much coat the deck with the Lick Growl and um, that way I can mask off the lines that I need to and the areas for the markings on the decks. So each of the um, the deck sections I've sort of masked off different areas helps if it stay on the uh, on the clip essentially it's just going I've masked off those edges to to keep the main hull color and uh, everything else will get covered in that off-white and then I can mask that off and do the dark gray over the top so that um, yeah, we'd see the, the dark grey sections there. Now one thing I'm concerned about is these lines are going to be pretty narrow so I'm not sure how well they're going to mask. Um, I'll just be using Tamiya tape, uh, very thin strips to sort of try and get the bulk of these markings. Unfortunately in these kits there's no water slide decals but I do have the 2205 one of the multi-deck carriers um, I think this is the only one, uh, these two are the only ones uh, that I've got so far. But these actually come with water slide decals, so it gives you a bit of an idea of what sort of markings I can put on and how thin they are. I don't think I'll be able to get them that good, but um, we'll see how it goes. So that's next, masking, uh, sorry, painting the off-white and then masking uh, those markings. So I've painted all the decks, the licked 
growl. So now it's just a matter of uh, going through and masking all the line markings that I want. So I'll be painting over with the uh, dark grey. And hopefully these masks will hold. They're pretty thin. I've just taken Tamiya tape, cut it into really thin strips and uh, tried to burnish it down as best I can. But when you get down to that width, it tends to move a little bit. So, um, yeah. Now, what I've done is I've done some variation between the markings so that they're not all exactly the same. And I've taken just, you know, I've used a bit of artistic license to uh, do the lines just to, to mix it up a little bit, but um, I'm sure they're not really that accurate to the, uh, you know, to the mecha in the series. And, you know, looking at these boxes, I've sort of taken a little bit of inspiration from them. But it's a bit hard to see what happens in the lower decks. So uh, I've got, you know, things like this sort of happening on the, the upper decks, just uh, some lines. And the other thing I'm going to try and do, and I'm not sure if it's going to work, is um, once I've glossed everything, I'm going to try to use some white panel line, just a bit of oil paint uh, thinned right down and um, yeah, see if I can get some more markings using the panel lines on the, on the pieces. So next step is for me to paint the dark gray and then we will lift the masks and see what kind of mess I've made. Moment of truth time to see how my masking worked for these decks. So I've painted the dark gray over the top of the, uh, the light gray, and the lit gray, light gray. Um, stripes. So now it's time to pull back the masking tape and see how well it turned out. I'm hoping it turned out okay. It actually looks pretty promising. These lines, they actually come up pretty clean. They are probably oversized for the scale of the, the ship, but if I get some white panel line washes sort of in those panel lines, they might, uh, they might be to a better scale, or they might represent the thinner lines that might be on the decks. So this is the bit I'm kind of really concerned about. I masked along the sides. So I'm hoping sort of none of the grey paint went down into any gaps. Oh, there's another, another line in there I missed. as it gets sticks to uh, sticks to your fingers and everything when you're pulling it off all right let's have a closer look at this so I think that uh, came up pretty well actually it's uh, looks like I've got some nice clean lines in there we've got the color around the edge which is good I don't see any sort of touch-ups I need to do there Let's look at one of the upper decks. I have noticed since working with the lacquer acrylics, 
they tend to work a lot better with masks compared to the water-based acrylics I've been used to in the past. And I think some of that has to do with the fact that it dries so quickly. So as soon as the paint hits the surface, it tends to, tends to dry. Unlike the water-based acrylics I've used in the past, which sometimes have a bit of residual moisture in there. And as a result, they will seep under the, the mask or into areas where it's not, the masking tape's not stuck down super tight. So far, that's looking pretty good. Get the rest of the tape. So I no longer need any of my masking here because essentially the next step will be a gloss coat. After I've checked for any touch-ups I need to do, but uh, gloss coat and then panel lines so thankfully I don't need to do any more masking touch wood I've spent quite a bit of time just on the masking alone where's the way with any painting project it's all about the preparation The other thing I really like about these lacquer based paints is that they stick so well to the plastic. Um, I mean, previously when I've used, you know, Vallejo Model Air, provided it's been primed and you've allowed plenty of time for the paint to dry, it usually doesn't lift um, with masking tape as long as you're careful. But with this stuff, with the lacquer paints, it's almost like you can just rip the uh, masking off and it seems to to work all right. Not lift the paint at all. So, pretty happy with that one. It's uh, come up really clean. Got the Still got the colour around the edge. And of course we've got the, the clear delineation of the lines. You can see they're a little bit crooked. But that's because of the masking tape that I've laid down. When you get really long, thin strips, that Tamiya paint, uh, that Tamiya tape, it's actually quite tricky to get it to be straight. So each deck on each of these carriers has different line markings. So trying to get a lot of variation in there. Most of the panel lines that are on each of the decks are actually similar all the way through. So it's nice to sort of mix it up a bit. Again, we've got a pretty clear delineation of the colour in the sides. And then lines on the deck. It's coming out really well. So I'll sort of give you a bit of an idea of what these are kind of going to look like. You know, when they're sort of stacked up, it'll be something. You know, you're going to get those sort of variations between the markings. Now, I'm going to go through and take all the masks off the rest of these pieces and just see if there's any touch-ups that I need to do. Taken all the masking off for the decks and it's come out about 50-50. 50% of them came out perfect. No touch-ups required. Uh, incredibly happy with the way you know the edges came up, still retaining the colour of the hull. And of course the grey on the top and the light grey for the lines. So most uh, yeah, half of them came out alright. The rest of them need minor touch-ups, so they're not really, and you know, we can see this sort of end here, the lines came up nice and crisp, however right on the edge you can sort of just see a bit of the grey, or is it worse on the other side, yeah it's a bit hard to see on camera but there's actually a little bit um, on that corner a little bit grey, so um, the other ones that were quite tricky were the edges on 
the green one, which is the bell grey. Um, there's a little bit of grey sort of bleeding onto the green there that shouldn't be there, so I've just got to go through and touch that up. And most of these pieces here are for the bell grey. Um, yeah, and they're, they're very minor touch-ups, but I think given that it's sort of coming up so well so far, I might as well spend the extra time uh, touching them up. So next step is to touch them up um, and then get the gloss coat down ready for panel lining. Okay, so I wanted to do some white uh, panel line wash on the decks. So to pick out all those sort of really fine panel lines on there. So you can see I've experimented on this piece here. It's not quite complete yet, but you can see that the white wash is actually picking out a lot of those sort of details. I haven't cleaned this up yet. It's still sort of just, um, I've just been applying it. But I just wanted to quickly show you how I was going about it. So I basically don't have any just straight enamel panel line that's white. I've ordered some Mr. Weathering white. But in the meantime, I'm using the Abtilong 502. And this is, so you get that focus, ABT001 Snow White. And all I've done is I have watered it right down with Tamiya enamel uh, thinner. So X20. And I literally just put a dab of um, oil paint in there and sort of filled the cup up, I don't know, um, probably a fifth or something like that with thinners. Um, so it's very, it's very uh, thin. And I've just put it sort of in this uh, bottle now, but yeah, it's super thin, so it has no trouble flowing. So what I'm gonna do is put some of this stuff in the cup. And I'm going to just use a uh, paintbrush to apply it. So I've got a number four brush here, but it's got a decent point on it, so it means it can hold quite a bit of the uh, panel liner. And, uh, but it's still got a good point on it so that I can get it right into those panel lines. So I'm literally loading up the brush and just dabbing it and using the computer action. Now I think I may have thinned it down maybe a bit too much because there's uh, the pigment in these oils is really fine. So I may have thinned it down too much, but what I can do is just apply it multiple times. So you can see how that sort of just flowed in. It's really picking out sort of a lot of those really fine panel lines in there. So I'll try and show this up close. But you can see because it's so thin, you know, that capillary action is working really well. This kit has quite fine but deep panel lines, so it's perfect for this sort of process. I'm not sure I just dabbing it in there. You can see I've made a bit of a mess there, but that's all right. That'll clean up just with a bit of enamel thinner or a bit of shellite later on. I suspect this will probably take a while to dry. So normally with the Tamiya panel liner. Um, I'll only leave it sort of half an hour, but I think this stuff will probably need a lot longer. So, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way that's um, that's working. And this one I sort of did earlier. What I can do is just apply, apply it multiple times and help build up that pigment a little bit more. I don't need the panel lines to be super white because of course the larger 
uh, markings that I've done are in a light grey but I do still want it to sort of pop a little bit there we go still a bit rough but I think over multiple applications it'll come up okay so that's what I'll be doing for all of the decks for all three carriers and I'll come back and show you uh, when I go through the, the cleanup of it these Mecha collection kits have fantastic panel lines so I want to capitalize on that and use a panel line wash for the uh, the rest of the body uh, the rest of the hull but I don't want to just use straight black and the problem is I don't have multiple color sort of panel line washes so I'm going to make my own using uh, Tamiya enamels so if you've used the Tamiya panel line accent color um, they're just really thin enamel paint so you can make your own and so that's what I'm going to do now for the green uh, ship I'm going to use this uh, dark green because I don't want a black I think that'll be too contrasty so what I've done is I've just poured a tiny amount into the bottom of this uh, little cup and I'm going to use some enamel thinner I just want to give you an idea of how much I thin it down so I'm just using a an eyedropper to uh, get some enamel thinner in there and so you get a bit of an idea of whoop, and I've just spilt it so you really want it sort of super thin Okay, you're not airbrushing this stuff. This is stuff that's going to work with capillary action. So you really want to make sure it's nice and thin. And just give it a quick, quick mix. Now this stuff will separate out. And of course I'm getting it everywhere. Might move these out of the way so I don't make a mess on those. So you can see it's you know, super thin. Except you don't want it so thin that the pigment doesn't sort of um, hold in the panel lines. So. I'm just mixing up a little bit. I mean, this is just enough for the one green carrier. And I can see that's pretty dark. Might be a bit tricky to see on. But it's pretty dark. So I'm just going to compare it against the, the green I've used for the ship. I reckon I could probably darken it up a little bit more. So I'm going to just add a little bit of black and with these enamel paints you really want to give them a good shake before you uh, sort of start using them and then I use the same technique for all my paints which is that come out of a jar which is pretty much use a toothpick to guide the paint in so I'm just going to put in a little couple of drips and I also clean clean the top of the jar so it doesn't uh, get clogged up with paint and the next time I go to open it it all seizes up so now I've got a bit of black in there Just giving it a good stir. And of course, I'm making a hell of a mess here, but 
it's a lot darker and I think that'll be a lot more suitable so before I make any more of a mess I'm going to use uh, I just bought a heap of these sort of dropper bottles but they're really good for when you mix up I mean I usually use them just for paint you know um, where I've mixed up my own colors but it is just as good for storing this stuff And the good thing about putting it in a container like this is I can give it a really good shake once it's um, once it's in there. So I'm going to give that a good shake. And it does look black on camera, but um, it's actually it's actually got a green tinge to it so I think that'll be perfect for uh, for what I want to do you'll see if we can sort of compare the you can see with the black next to it that uh, yeah it's got a bit more of a green tinge so that's perfect that's my green done so I don't think I'll contaminate you can see the cup's got you know, very little pigment left in it so that means I stirred it reasonably well Some of this mess. So the the advantage of using enamel uh, paints, that to me are enamel paints, of course, is that you can mix up whatever colour you want. So there's some real advantages to making your own panel line wash. Now the next one I want to do is for the blue. So that'll be a dark blue, and all I've got is this flat blue. So I'm just going to, again, add some black to sort of darken it up. So it's not purely black. It will have a bit of a blue tinge to it. You can sort of get a bit of an idea of how much is, how much is in there. Yep, I reckon that'll be that'll be fine. So again, mix this into okay, pour this into a container so I can give it a good mix. And of course I can use it for other projects. Because I don't think I'll be using very much of it. But I just find that if I use straight black panel line on coloured surfaces tends to, especially when you're talking about smaller kits, it tends to be highly contrasting. It sort of makes it more toy-like, I reckon, than if you sort of make it a bit more subtle. Okay, so let's see how these are going to come up on camera. Yeah, so you can see the green one's probably a bit, uh, bit darker than the blue, but the blue's nice and dark. So next one is to measure up, um, make some purple. So I need a mixing cup. This time I'm going to use a combination of FX8 flat blue, FX XF8 and XF7 flat red to make a, a sort of a purple base. And then I can sort of add some black to it, XF1. When I first started modeling when I was a kid, I used exclusively enamel paints. So uh, it's funny that I've sort of come back to them. Yeah, modeling as an adult. I used to paint with brush paint with old Humbrol enamels. All right, let's see how we go, getting sort of a base purple before um, before I add the black, because it might darken up anyway with the, uh, the blue, I'm not sure. 
probably not as purple as I would like. It's probably a bit more blue. But I don't know if that's going to really matter if it's going to be in all the panel lines. Just as long as it's not sort of straight black. Yes, it's sort of a uh, inky, dark inky blue. So I might just try putting a little bit more red in there. Let's see, here we go. So this one's now got quite a bit of paint in it, so I'm going to have to... Yeah, it's been... It's a bit more red in it now, so it'll be... Yes, like very, very dark purple. So again, I'm getting it sort of close to black, but not using actual black. Okay, so let's water this guy down. Probably a bit hard to sort of see the difference between them on camera, but there is a uh, there is a difference. So it's definitely got a green tinge to it. Uh, the blue is pretty obvious, but the uh, the purple yeah, it sort of looks brown, but it's um, definitely got a bit more blue in it. So I think that's going to give me the desired effect. Anyway, uh, like I said, at least it's not just straight black. So. I'm going to clean up here and then I will come back and um, show you how I do the panel lining on the hull. Okay, so I'm ready to do some panel lining with my custom made panel line wash. I've got a little cup here that's just got a bit of the Tamiya X20 enamel thinner in it just for cleaning out the brush. And another little cup that I'm going to put some of this in because I won't need very much, I don't think. So it's a good idea just to get your, your brush wet in the thinners first. Just to soften it up a little bit. And again, I'm using a number four brush just with a really good point on it. This is just a synthetic, uh, synthetic brush. So it's not a natural fiber brush or anything. And it's a matter of loading up the brush the panel liner and let's see if we can get this in shot I'm literally just touch it and let capillary action do all the work so you can sort of see how that's flowed through there is a little bit of mess that's fine that'll clean up So it darkens up those lines beautifully and all those little bits of detail start to pop. That's what we want. So I'm going to go through and do that with the rest of the, the, the kits. So I'm going to use the same process and when I get to cleaning it up I'll show you that process. Okay, time to clean up the panel lines. So get in focus, you can see that one's quite a bit of a mess. So I just use the normal technique that I do, which is to use uh, shellite, which is one of the active ingredients in Zippo fluid. So Zippo fluid works the same way. You can also use um, enamel thinner. Uh, lots of things will remove this stuff. So uh, I've allowed it a good few hours to dry. I've just decanted the shell out into a smaller bottle so it's a bit easier to uh, manage. So what I do is I will get a cotton bud, I will dunk it in the shell out, and then I'll just dab off the extra on a white towel, on a paper towel. And then I'll just work my way across. And it's been on there for a few hours so it has dried very well which means I do need to give it just a little bit of a rub but what that means is that 
any of the wash that's stuck in the panel lines is more likely to stay there. So let's see if I can bring this into focus and hard to tell but it actually is cleaning it up very well now the white panel line wash I used on the top of the decks I used oil paint for that and enamel thinner but the oil paint is taking a while to dry so I've got to leave that some time before I clean up the the tops of the deck so I'm just going through and cleaning up all the panel lines on the uh, on the rest of the hull and you just want to make sure that you get it all because any extra panel line wash you sort of that goes over the panel lines once you put a matte varnish over the top of it there's not much you can do about it short of stripping everything down and starting again so you want to make sure you, you get it all clean it all properly now what I'll do is I'll go through and clean up all this lot and then I might leave them for you know overnight and come back to them the next day and have a look over just to see that I haven't missed anything and inevitably I tend to always find something that I've missed so it's just a good way of sort of making sure that you catch it all but I am very happy with the custom colour panel line wash I created just using the to me are enamels and enamel thinner they've actually come up really well and the panel lines on these kits are so deep and so well defined that their capillary action just works so well on these things so you can sort of see those areas that are matte they're the uh, panel line wash because it'll dry matte but if I just rub this over you see that'll clean that up and because the paints that I used are lacquer based of course the enamel thinner does not interact with it so if you're using any kind of panel line wash there's lots of different types. Enamel is probably one of the more common ones. You just need to make sure that your base paint that you have down is not going to react with it. So for example if you're using water-based acrylic paints and then you use water-based acrylic washes over the top, chances are it might reactivate the acrylic paint underneath. Not always but it's something to be aware of. So generally if you go with something like a, a lacquer or an acrylic base paint and then you use enamel wash over the top, you're usually pretty safe. Just depends on the, the formula of the paint that's used and the formula of the washes. Like all this stuff, you really want to test it first if you've got a new product that you want to try out. Test it on your paint meal first. So you don't sort of go ahead and ruin one of your kits that you're, that you're working on. So you can see how that's come up, nice and clean. So the next step will be for me to do all the rest of the pieces, check them in the morning, and also do the top of the decks, the white panel line wash. So then once that's all cleaned up, I'll be ready for a matte varnish. Time to do some cleanup on the deck markings. I've already tried applying some shellite to clean it up and you can probably see it's a little bit chalky on the surface there. And so because I used 
the Abtalung oils, it takes a bit longer to dry. So I've left this for a good 24 hours and now's the time I'm going to clean it up. So I'm going to just use the same trick that I use for cleaning up all the rest of the panel lines. Just a bit of, a bit of shellite on a cotton bud. Just dampen it off. Uh, dab off the excess on a paper towel. And I'm just lightly brushing. I think I'm pretty happy with the way the lines look. Gives you that extra bit of detail on top of the lines that I masked and painted. So I'm pretty happy about that. I'm just wiping off all that excess. I mean, a lot of this is not going to be seen because there's a deck that goes over the top. But uh, pretty happy with that. There's still a little bit of chalky residue, so maybe just a bit more of a cleanup. To do panel line washes, you really need a really good quality oil paint with really fine pigment. Don't go using cheap oil paints because the pigment when it goes into those panel lines you'll actually see the little bits of pigment in it so you want a really high quality oil paint. I've used the Abtolung oils before and been really happy with those and of course a tube of that will last you last you forever doing this sort of thing. So Go and to just to see if we can compare these two. See the one on the bottom. It's not coming up too well on camera, but it's actually a little bit more chalky on the grey surface. So I'll just run the shellite over it and clean it up a little bit more. Now I found that just using enamels, they do tend to dry a little bit quicker panel lines. So for oils, you've just got to give it a little bit more time before you do the clean up. There we go, pretty happy with that. Nice level of detail. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with each of the tops of the decks. The other thing I want to do is add just a little bit of detail to the bridge. So you can see the bridge is just green at the moment, but what I want to do is show uh, at least an indication of uh, a window there. So I'm going to show you what I'm using for reference. This fantastic book, which is the Yamato 2199 uh, modeling guide and even though this is a Japanese language book it's got plenty of pictures and I quite often use it for reference so one of the kits featured is the Lambia and it is this kit here I think is a 1 1000 scale but there's some things that I want to take from it to use for the Mecha collection size so one thing they show is they've actually illuminated this whole kit and they show sort of the illuminated windows on the bridge here. So I want to sort of incorporate that. Now I don't have any orange enamel paint, uh, but I do have some yellow. So I think I might just use some yellow. And if we have a look at, you know, one of the other ones here, um, that's the, the Bell Grey, that's actually yellow. So some other details that I've sort of taken inspiration from from this particular build is they've put a light you know inside one of the um, inside the decks so of course I'll be doing that um, to just give a bit of interest so again sort of just showing this kit's been fully light and just looks amazing so the other thing that this particular builder has used is purple lights for the engine so I may actually use something similar to that I may have to uh, mix up some clear purple and just to um, color the LEDs that I'll be using and it looks like for the different ones use the same sort of color so um, 
that's where I'm sort of getting my inspiration from. Uh, like I said, the main things are I want to use a little bit of yellow here, and I'll probably end up, yeah, colouring the LEDs purple like this uh, instance. So I want to show you how I'm actually going to put some indication of uh, windows in the bridge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some Tamiya enamel. I'm going to use XF3, flat yellow. And the reason that I use this is twofold. So first of all, it's got really dense pigment, so it's really opaque. The other thing is that I can wipe off the excess using shellite or zippo fluid or enamel thinner, and it won't affect the lacquer paint that's underneath. So similar to a panel line wash, the only difference is, is that I'm not gonna be thinning it down. So give it a good shake. Because enamel paints do separate pretty quick. So you want to make sure you give it a really good shake. And the great thing about these particular kits is because the panel lines and the indication of windows and all that sort of thing are quite uh, deep, you don't actually have to be particularly clean at this stage. So it's perfect for someone like me who has quite ordinary eyesight just dabbing it in there you can see that it's not even not even close to to perfect it's pretty rough just a couple of dabs in there and you do a little bit underneath as well try and get this in short if I can and again you know it looks looks rough you see it's just a couple of dabs of paint in there so it looks really rough but that's all right because we can use cotton bud and shellite to clean it up same as the panel line cleaning up panel lines you're just getting a cotton bud, dampening it with some shellite, and I'm literally going to rub it over the top. So I'm going to do the same on the bottom. And you can be quite heavy handed with the shellite in this case because the panel lines are quite deep so the enamel paint will stay in those recesses. So you can see that now it's just a couple of you know, small bits of yellow in there. Very difficult to sort of get it in focus. So if we can, uh, it's just a hint of a window. It doesn't need to be over the top because you're talking about something that's very small, you know, very small representation of something that's very large. So it's really just about giving a hint of a lit up bridge through the windows. But I think that'll do it. So. Uh, like I said, a bit hard to get on shot. Maybe when I get the final photos done, it might become a bit clearer, but uh, it is very subtle and that's all it needs to be. So that's just some final touches that I'm going to do before I do the matte coat. So I'll finish these off, do the windows for each of them and then do the matte coat. I might uh, show the pieces once they've had the matte coat before we get into the final assembly. Okay, the final part of this video is just to show you how everything came up after the matte coat. So I'm really pleased with it. Um, it just you know, stops looking like a toy and looks a lot more like a scale version of the spaceships once you put a matte coat on it. So I've just used the SMS flat clear and as you can see it's just flattened everything down nicely there's a slight sheen to it but that's because i only put light coats of the matte on and i think i actually prefer 
having at least a little bit of a glean to it. I don't want it super dead flat, but it has just come up. You know, the panel lines and everything just really have come out really nice. You know, even around sort of the guns and the vents and the various portholes or whatever they are. Also just to show the windows there. So they stick out pretty well. I love that uh, violet, that's come up beautiful. A really nice colour that one. So the final um, final thing for me to do is put all this stuff together with the lighting and the and the bases and that will be in the next video. So until then, I'll catch you later.